Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to day four. I'm going to get everybody who is in our waiting room in here now. So if you are joining me, go ahead and pop in. Let's make sure that we are also going live on Facebook in our group. So I'm just going to check that real quick and make sure that we're actually going live because you never know. Well, it looks like we're not. All right. So let's get us inside of Facebook. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So glad you guys are here. There's Melissa and Melissa. We got two Melissas. We got Melissa Squared and Jennifer and Diana. I'm so glad you guys are here. Love having people here where I can actually see your faces. Okay. Let me make sure. Facebook is doing its thing. You know, sometimes you think that like tech is actually going to make it easier and sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. So we, I just got a new subscription to a really cool tech thing called Restream, which is supposed to stream in multiple places. So it's supposed to be on Facebook and also in my YouTube channel. And um, sometimes it just doesn't work what you think. So, all right. Hopefully we are streaming now on Facebook. Let's get everybody in here. Hi, Diana. So good to see your face. Welcome. Hi, and Chris. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you're here. Um, does everybody have their um, playbook? Prosperity playbook. Yep. Okay, perfect. If you don't, go ahead and just pop in the chat here that you don't have it. And I will make sure that my team gets it to you. We also have it inside of the Facebook group. And it's also on the replay page. So we've got it in multiple places so that you guys can actually um, have what it is that you need. So, uh, and I will be sharing mine too. So I'll share mine um, so that you can kind of follow along what we're doing for day four. Wow. I can't believe it's day four already, you guys. It's Thursday. Can you believe it? Okay, Diana, you don't have it. I will make sure that you get it. Okay. I will. I'll make sure that you get that. Um, I cannot even believe today is Thursday. It's crazy. My husband yesterday was like, is it Friday yet? And I'm like, whoa, I'm not ready for Friday yet. So you guys, I love doing this. I love sharing information. I love sharing and doing trainings. I love teaching. It's so, so fun for me. And I love even more to see you guys like get these ahas, these insights, these takeaways, these wins. That just makes my heart really, really happy. So um, would love to hear as we go through the training today. If you have questions, please raise your hand, come off mute, whatever it is that you want to do so that I can make sure that I'm answering your questions. I want this training to be something that you would be like, holy crap, I can't believe that Chris just did that for free. Like, I would have paid for this training, right? And that really is my intention whenever I do any free trainings is to make sure that you guys walk away with incredible value, regardless of whether you decide to join me in any of the programs, it's totally fine. I want you here because the information that you guys have that I'm giving you is what we know works today in 2024. OK, not what you might have been taught back in 2015, like me. Right. There are some very old, outdated methods that really don't work anymore in today's market. OK, so I'm actually going to talk about four specific things that are actually causing your people to say no. OK, and um, we've we got lots of people popping into today. This is great. You guys must be really interested in uh, making invitations. Laura, welcome back. So. The market has changed pretty dramatically from 2015 to today, and I really want to share kind of what are the are the things that we see that are changing, that are shifting in the market, what are some of the reasons why people are not buying, and what to do instead, and here is one thing that I want to share is it's not that people are not buying, people are still buying, but there's four obstacles that we kind of need to make sure that we're talking about in order for people to feel safe and in order for people to have an experience of no like trust. Okay. So the first one is perception of risk. And I talked a little bit about this yesterday. So I'm going to go through kind of like the four uh, reasons why people kind of get stuck or why you might be hearing no's. The first one is perception of risk. So if it, if there's a lot of, um, well, we know that there are a lot of missed uh, information that's put out there. We know that we probably have invested in something before that didn't work out the way that we thought it was going to work out, right? 
So back in the day when Zoom was new and when webinars were new, everybody was like doing these two hour webinars and people are doing webinars and hopping on webinars and getting sales that way, right? And people don't want that anymore, right? We, we're actually getting like Zoom fatigue, right? So thank you for joining me again because you guys are like superheroes to like be on this Zoom call yet again for like four days, right? People are getting Zoom fatigue, right? And the perception of risk is a lot higher because people have been burned, right? We all have probably experienced that. I think I shared yesterday that I invested about $60,000, no lie, on a marketing agency and my business went down by 50%. Right. So my perception of of risk when I was looking at any type of support in my business to help me with marketing was was like, ho, ho, ho. I don't want to make that mistake again. Right. So you guys were probably sitting in the same way and your clients, too. They may have bought a course that didn't work for them. They may have had a bad experience in a business program or a coaching program that didn't work for them. So we know that the perception of risk is high right now. And so what is important is actually what I've been doing for years and years and years, which is we get to create an experience first. OK, because nobody's perception of risk is going to go down unless they feel safe and unless they have an experience first and they have an experience of no like trust with you. Right. So this isn't about just like doing a recording and sending the recording to everybody or doing a webinar and trying to get people from webinars that doesn't work anymore. Um, it just doesn't work well as a first introduction. I'm not going to say that webinars never work because I'm sure there are people that have a business model that do that. But it's not the same as let me just get somebody to a webinar and then they're going to buy. It just doesn't work like that anymore. So. How are we actually nurturing people and giving them an experience before we ask them to buy? How are we lowering that perception of risk? So people feel seen, people feel heard, people feel held, and people feel like, okay, this might be something that I would be interested in, okay? So number one is perception of risk has gone up, right? Number two is if it feels like there's too much friction, which means if it feels like it's too hard for somebody to get your result that you're talking about, that's going to have them say no to. Okay. So let me give you a couple examples. If we're saying, come work with me and I'm going to give you my 22 point XYZ thing to help you get your result, they're out. Nobody wants a 22 step anything, right? <laughs> so we want to make sure that we are simplifying a process so that people can actually get results. If it feels like it's going to be too hard to get the result that they want, they're going to they're going to you know not probably not say yes or they're going to need to be in your world for a heck of a long much longer time before they're willing to say yes. So the important thing here is how are we actually simplifying things for them and helping them get wins quicker. Right? So every single day that you guys have been, you know, Christina's like, I'm glad no webinars it wasn't even on my list. Yeah, I actually did try that tactic. It didn't work. <laughs> so believe me, I'm, when I tell you that I'm going to give you what works and what doesn't work, it's only because I've tried the things. I'm going to let you know the things that work, the things that don't work. Okay. Promise. I will never tell you to do something that I haven't personally tried and gotten results out of my business. So if it's too hard, people are not going to believe that it's actually possible. Right. And we're actually going to talk about the ladder of beliefs today. And one of the rungs on the ladder of beliefs is that before they can say yes to working with you, they have to believe that the result that they want is possible in the world, period. And if there's too much friction, if there's if it's, they feel like it's too hard, they're not going to feel like it's possible for them. OK, number three, there's lack of clarity around what you do that's different than everybody else. This is why signature system was so important. People invest in processes. And if you need the recording on signature system, that was on day two. So you can go back and listen to the importance of having a signature system. A signature system is your proprietary process. It is what is gonna allow you to stand out in your niche. It's going to be what makes the difference between you as a health coach and someone else as a health coach, or you as an energy worker and someone else as an energy worker, okay? So signature system allows you to make your process the hero 
which means that it's going to allow you to have clarity about what you do that makes it your secret sauce. Okay. So my secret sauce is what I'm teaching you guys here in this workshop. It's the soulful abundance system. It's what I teach all my clients inside of Activate Abundance. It's what I teach inside of my uh, trainings. It's what I wrote a book about. By the way, that book is coming out soon. I cannot wait to share it with you guys. I'm so, so excited. Um, and so we need to have a signature process. Okay. I have referred to that as a signature system, but it is the same thing. It's a proprietary process. It's a series of steps that you take people through that you become known for. And you make that signature system your hero. So it takes the pressure off you needing to just sell you. So lack of clarity, how do we do that? We need to make sure that they're really, really clear on how you can help them now and what makes you different, okay? Otherwise, if they're not clear, they're just gonna be price shopping, right? Who's the person who can help me at the lowest price, right? And that's not necessarily a, an effective uh, way to get results. And number four is lack of certainty lack of certainty. They have lack of certainty in their success, lack of certainty in, to, in their success. So how do we help them believe that it's not just possible in the world, but it's possible for them and it's possible for them now, right? So this is where, um, and you guys can write this down, that the way that we overcome this piece and help lower the, the perception of risk, lack of clarity, uh, and, and actually increase certainty is with sharing success stories or social proof of your method, your process, your system. Okay. So if people are getting results by going through your process or your system or working with you, we want to share that. Why? Because we can say that our process works all day long. But when a client shares that the process works, that increases certainty right? Yeah. We also want to have conviction. This is another thing that is going to increase certainty, your confidence, your confidence and conviction that your process works, your process works. Okay. So that's an inner game, right? We talked on day one about the inner game, the mindset, it's why we had to claim our value and worthiness first. That is also claiming our conviction that we are here to support people and that our process works. Now, I want to share also, because I had a question about this today from um, a, a one of the uh, people that I had a call with today. And she said, how do I, I can't guarantee anybody results, right? How do I show up with conviction that my process is going to work if I can't guarantee results. Does anybody have that question or feel like, oh, well, if I can't guarantee results, I can't really. Yeah. So there's a big difference between predictability of results versus a guarantee of results. In truth, none of us can guarantee results for anybody else unless we can actually hop inside their body and do the work for them, right? Right. That's the only way that we could guarantee anything is to actually do the work for them. Right. So if you're paying somebody to do the work for you, then, yeah, I would say that that person would need to guarantee results because you're paying them to do the work for you. Right. But as coaches, as transformational coaches, as healers, as practitioners, we can't guarantee the results, but what we can do is talk about the predictability of the outcome when somebody implements the process, right? Like it's like information. We know information doesn't equal transformation. We can support somebody. We can help them. We can give them uh, the, tell them the steps, right? I can tell you the exact strategy to use to build your business to six figures and multiple six figures, but until you implement it, Nothing I can do, right? I can't jump inside your body and grow your business for you. Same thing when we're coaching clients, right? Is we can't keep them from going through McDonald's. We can't keep them from, you know, binging on the ice cream at midnight or whatever it is, right? We can't, we can't do the work for them. So I want you to see that what your conviction is 
And what your confidence is, is when somebody shows up to your calls, when they implement what it is that you're helping them with and follow through, the predictability of their results is pretty darn high, right? Wouldn't you say that? Right. Like if someone said, well, you know, if you do this to, you know, for the next 21 days, the predictability of having this X, Y, Z result is going to be pretty on par, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's anything in transformational coaching, nutrition, healers, energy workers, right? We have to do the thing. They have to do the thing too. Okay. So I just want you to understand that when we talk about a guarantee or a promise on anything, it's, it's not a guarantee that you are responsible for their results. They, your clients are always going to be responsible for their results. Okay. But if they show up and they follow through, they're going to get the results with you. Right. We all do. Right. So I, I hope that takes some pressure off those of you that are trying to build and grow your business when you feel like I can't guarantee results. Why is somebody, you know, how do I, you know, feel really confident about what I'm offering? Because I hear that a lot. And I'm like, okay, here's the difference. We are confident that with our support, and with accountability and when they show up and when they implement that they are most likely and predictable to walk away with the results that they desire. Right? Okay, cool. So those are four reasons why your clients are saying no and what we need to do to get a yes. So just a quick recap before we go into the ladder of beliefs, perception of risk, right? People have been burned before. So we need to make sure that we are nurturing people that are coming into our ecosystem, creating relationships, creating a sense of safety and no like trust that lowers the perception of risk. Okay. Number uh, two, we need to uh, reduce the amount of friction. If we make them jump through multiple hoops in order to get the results or in order to work with us or in order to learn more, Mike, my website is shineabundancenow.com. Um, then that's going to create more friction, right? So how do we minimize the friction of people wanting to work with us and, and simplify things so it doesn't feel so hard, right? It's one of the reasons why I really like talking about simplicity because complexity kills anything, right? whether we're trying to create any new habit or do anything differently, if we make it too complex, we're out, right? Yeah, me too, I'm out. If it's too hard, I'm out. Like that's too hard, I'm out. I want simple. So it's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I wanna have a simple system that I can put on repeat. Number three, lack of clarity. What makes you different, right? They're not saying yes, they're saying no because they're not really clear about what makes you different. Okay. What makes me different is that I work specifically with coaches, holistic practitioners, and nutritionists or healers. Okay. And I have a very heart centered system that's based on building relationships. I don't do fancy funnels. I don't do Facebook ads. This is all about building organically, cultivating community. That's what makes me different. And my soulful abundance system is the process or the framework that I teach my clients to use. And it's what you guys are learning here. Okay. And then the fourth thing was no certainty. They're not certain that they're actually going to get the results. So social proof, sharing, sharing your story too is another one, right? People want hope. They want to believe and see, oh, okay, well, if she did it, then it could be possible for me too. So how are we increasing certainty so that people feel like, okay, I think that this is possible for me now right? Not when the kids go to school, not when the stars align, not when the every, you know, time is right. Okay. So those are the four uh, reasons why people are saying no, or why you might be getting a no and what we're going to do about it instead. So 2024, we see also that it takes about seven interactions and touches with people or 11 hours of interaction with us. Write that down and underline it, 11 hours. So now you can see why people are taking a little bit longer in that client pathway that I talked about yesterday, right? So clients are strangers, they become viewers, 
right? Then they become leads, then become potential clients, then they finally become buyers. That process is actually taking longer than it used to. So it's taking 11 hours of interaction with us before they have that no like trust and certainty. Okay. So how are you doing that? How are you doing that? How are you collapsing that timeline and making sure that you're interacting with them over a period of time, right? So what I'm teaching you right now and what you guys are witnessing is actually one of the ways that I do it. When I do a nurture event like this over five days, six days, seven days, guess what? That's hours of time that you guys get to spend with me in one week. Holy cow, right? So when we are doing uh, workshops, when we are doing in-person events, when we are just reaching out and connecting and saying, hey, how are you? Those are all touch points that collapse the timeline from zero to 11 hours, okay? So really, really important. Otherwise, if we don't have a method of doing that, if we don't have a system to do that, they're just going to be in our ecosystem for a lot longer. And they might actually start working with somebody else who's giving them the 11 hours. Okay. And here's a statistic that we also know people purchase and you guys write this down. People will purchase from the last three people who have reached out from that to them personally, right? People purchase from the last three people who have reached out to them personally. Okay, so that comes to invitations. Are we reaching out personally to people and inviting them to explore either working with us or hopping on a call or having an assessment or something like that? Christina, you're asking me, what's the difference between a webinar and a nurture event on Zoom? Oh, okay, great, huge difference. First of all, a webinar is um, always going to be more of a recording. So a webinar is something that's typically pre-recorded, and then it's actually added into what we call a funnel. So somebody's going to sign up for a webinar, and then maybe they're going to pick a time that they want to watch the webinar, right? And then the recording is going to be sent to them, and it's going to open the room, but it's pre-recorded. It's not live. So your nurture event that we do is actually live. And I think that that is so much more important because it creates intimacy, right? A pre-recorded webinar that you're watching, there's no two-way anything, right? A Zoom where everybody's together and they're uh, getting their questions answered and they're getting seen and they're getting heard and, you know, we're talking to them, right? Like you can say, hey, Melissa, I'm so glad you're here right? We got two Melissa's here, right? Jennifer, I'm so glad you're here. That feels intimate, right? That feels like, oh, she actually sees me, right? So that's really important on a webinar that doesn't happen and a webinar that doesn't happen. Okay. Good question. All right. You guys ready to dive more into invitations? Okay, cool. Let me share my screen with you guys and I will pull up the workbook. Ah, it's not there. Where'd it go? I know it's on my desktop right here because I was just looking at it. All right. There it is. Okay. Can everybody see day four invite? Give me a thumbs up. Yep. Okay. Nods. Great. Perfect. All right. Day four invite. Invitations. And you guys notice that we are now on day four and the invite step is actually step number five, right? We've started first with mindset, aligning, owning our value and worthiness, right? Then we talked about some of the foundation pieces. Then we talked specifically yesterday about attraction and nurturing. Inviting comes after that, okay? We have to attract and nurture, and we also have to invite, but we don't like just go for the juggler and like invite somebody to work with us right away before there's an experience happening, an experience of no like trust. Okay, so this is um, these are the beliefs that we all go through. It's called the ladder of beliefs before we make a decision to buy. And if any one of these steps are a no go, we will not make a decision to buy. Okay, so I'm going to share with you. That's why I actually don't believe in overcoming objections. I don't really believe that people have objections. I believe that people get stuck on whether they believe something is possible or not for them. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through the, the ladder of beliefs. Step one 
is, and we actually end up going back to, to alignment here, is we have to believe that we're enrolled in ourselves, right? We have to have that conviction and certainty, right? That what we have is important and that we want to share it with people. If we're not enrolled in ourselves, if we are looking for somebody else to affirm our value and worthiness, guess what? Energetically, that is going to come through right? When we're not feeling confident about something or we feel needy or we feel like, oh gosh, well, you believe me, right? Mm -mm. So we have to own that first. We have to be uh, enrolled in us as healers with work to do, coaches with work to do, right? That's why we spent so much time on day one, getting really, really clear on what is the work that you do? Why is it important that people find you? What happens if they don't find you? right? And when we're clear there, then we can show up in full confidence. So step one is actually a pre-step. We have to, we have to be enrolled in ourselves first. All right. So I know this is kind of a little backwards, but step one is we, the person before they can buy anything, and this is anything like a mattress, a car, uh, the latest tech, a new computer, whatever. The person needs to believe that whatever result they want, is possible somewhere in the world, somewhere in the world, right? They might not believe it's possible for them yet, but they believe that it's possible somewhere in the world, right? So if someone is struggling with anxiety, they have to believe that somewhere in the world, it's possible for people to actually calm their nervous system and not feel anxious anymore, right? Otherwise, there's no way that they're gonna wanna work with you if you're helping people with anxiety. Make sense? Yeah. So they have to believe that it's possible in the world somewhere. Okay. So number two, they have to believe that the result is actually possible for them, right? They have to believe that the result is possible for them. This is one of the things that we were talking about perception of risk, right? If they don't believe it's possible, it's too big of a risk, right? If they don't believe it's the result is going to be possible for them, then that's too risky. They don't believe, if you guys don't believe that you can make money in your business, why would you invest in having business support, right? Right. So you have to believe whatever it is that is possible for you. Now we have to believe, we go up to the next ladder, they have to believe it's possible for them right now. We talked about that a little bit earlier, right? Not next year, not when, again, the, the kids go to school, not when they have all of the money saved up in their savings account, because I can guarantee you nobody has a health coaching savings account. Nobody has a healer savings account. Look, nobody has a business coach savings account. I didn't either. Okay. We don't have that. Nobody does. So they have to believe that the result that they want, it, that, that they want that now. Okay. They want the result now. Okay. And they have to believe that the result that they want is possible right now. And now they want your support. Okay. They're not going to work with you, even if they think that it's possible and they want something now, if they don't want your support. Okay. This is why creating relationships is so important, right? People need to actually um, want to or need to resonate with you, feel safe with you, have an experience of no like trust with you before you're going to desire your support. Right? Yeah. Okay. So how do we do that? We do. We build relationships. We give value. We serve first. We nurture. Just like I talked about yesterday in the nurture method. Number five, and this is where many people tend to get stuck. They believe it's possible for them with your support, and yet they kind of get stuck here because they're not willing to either explore any outside resources or have conversations with people necessary to make the decision to buy, right? When it all comes down to it, they have to be willing to say, yes, I'm going to make this investment in my health. Yes, I'm going to make this investment to lower my anxiety. And I'm willing to have a conversation with whoever it is that I need to have a conversation with to support me in this decision, right? Sometimes it's us. Sometimes it's our partner. Sometimes it might be a bank, 
right? If I was, you know, needing to go to a, get a bank loan, if I said, you know what, I really want to invest in this thing to build and grow my business and my bank account says no, how else could I do that? Well, maybe I go to, to the bank and say, I want to take out a loan for this, or I want to take a small business loan out, right? Um, so this, they have to believe and be willing to have that conversation and to explore outside resources, Okay, if they're not willing to do that, they can't be a yes because they're stuck on that ladder of belief, right? So this is important that we're clear on the ladder of beliefs that people go through so that before we actually have a call with somebody, and, and the truth is by the time somebody actually gets on a call with you, they've already gone up to step one, two, three, four. That's what the nurture process does. The nurture process actually takes them from, I don't even know if I, you know, know if it's possible. It takes them all the way up to, to the ladder step number four, right? So think about it. By the time uh, you somebody comes and has a seat on my front porch to explore what resources I have, they already know that they want my support. They're just not sure yet where. So your person is already going to be clear that they want your support. Okay, so then it's okay, well, how do we support them? You know, once we lower the risk and we increase the certainty, then the chances of them being willing to explore, okay, I want this, I'm a heart yes for having it. How can I make it possible for me? How can I make it possible for me, right? And look, I've been in that position many, many times. When I hired my first business coach, I was 20 grand in debt. I was a single mom with three kids. I had no idea how I was going to afford it. I actually invested 10 grand. I said yes to invest 10 grand. Didn't have the 10 grand. My bank account said no, but I was a heart yes. And so I had to think, all right, how am I going to do this? I want this and I'm willing to explore resources on how I could make this possible for me. So I had to think outside of the box, right? What I didn't do is say, Sorry, bank account says no, because I was a heart yes, right? Now, if you're not a heart yes for anything, then the decision is done. If your client is not a heart yes, and they're like, yeah, I don't want that done. Like we're not trying to convince or persuade anybody, right? They have to say that they want the result. They want to, they have to believe it's possible for them now and they have to desire your result, okay? And, and when they get to that place, they have to be willing to explore outside resources. And that comes from inside them. That doesn't come from you. That comes from inside them, right? We can't convince somebody that they should want to have a different experience of life. Is this making sense? You guys picking up what I'm putting down here? They have to believe that they want a different experience of life first. Yeah. Okay, cool. So typically when we get to that final step, when people say, I can't afford it, or I don't have the money, or it's out of my price range, or whatever it is, what that really is about is there is too high of a risk here for me. I don't really believe that the result is possible, right? Because if they believed that they would get the result, they would find the money, right? Right? If they believed that they would lose the weight, they would find the money. If they believed that they could create, you know, build XYZ PDQ, they would find the money, right? We all do that, right? So there has to be that level of belief. So it's not about you and it's not about your pricing and it's not that you're charging too much and it's not that you, it has nothing to do with you. It's about their perception of risk and that they might not get the result. And so when this happens, we get to be a stand for them and what it is that they desire. Okay. So instead of saying, oh, of course you can afford it. No, we're not going to do that. Like if they feel, you know, that they can't afford it and that the risk is too high, then a couple of things that we can ask them is if you had, you know, a, what, what's in the way, you know, what's on a scale of one to 10 with you believing that the result is possible where are you? Chances are they're not at a 10 that they believe that the result was actually possible, right? So we can support them there then, but we have to know, right, where they are, where are they stuck on that ladder of belief, right? 
Um, I want to give you another example. If you were guaranteed, guaranteed, like the risk was like negligent and you were guaranteed that you would make, uh, let's say $5,000 off your next stock investment in the next 30 days. But you had to come up with $1,000 and you didn't have it. How many people do you think you would ask to borrow the thousand dollars for, or or would you explore outside resources to get it if you were guaranteed, right? A thousand dollar investment to get five grand back, right? Risk is down because there's a guarantee, right? Because they feel that it's absolutely going to happen, right? Yeah. If they say, I have to ask my husband first, my partner first, I need to talk to my mom, my sister, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Again, that is that actually comes down to they are worried about failing, right? And it's almost like they want to kind of share the risk now, right? If I said, oh, I don't know, let me talk to my husband. And then if he says yes, and I don't actually get the result, guess what? I get to share the blame, right? Well, my sister said I should do it, so it's okay. We tend to look for affirmation or approval from other people in order for us to have our dreams, in order to invest. And actually, women do that more than men. Women do that so much more than men. Men, if they want to invest in their business, typically they invest in their business. Women don't. Women are like, I don't know. It might mean that I have to take money out of the grocery budget in order to do that. What? No, you're investing in a business like it, our husbands, you know, or men that are building and growing a business. Just think about it differently. Right. It's not that there's anything wrong with us. It's just that we don't see it as an investment. You know, instead, instead, we kind of take a look at it at somehow it's taking away from our family or somehow it's taking money out of our grocery budget or something like that. So they get to minimize the risk. And then when it comes down to time, time is really the other side of money. Time and money are, are two sides of the same coin, okay? Typically, time is really just kind of like a smoke screen. It's like, I'm not really sure if I even want to do this. If I do do this, then it might cause some sort of pain or uh, I, I might actually get what I want and that feels scary to me, so I'm just not going to do it. I'm just going to say that I don't have enough time, okay? Because the truth is about time is that we all have plenty of time. Time was here before we were born. Time's going to be here after we leave. It's not about time. It's about how are we choosing to use our time, right? So we get to decide that we have the time. But when people say, oh, I don't have the time for that, that's actually just a decision. It's not really true. They do have the time. They're just making a decision that they don't want to use their time in that way, right? Uh, I love using the example, you know, because, because I'm a mom, I've got three boys. If my kid, you know, called me right now and said, mom, I need you. I am having a problem at school. I would say, y'all, I am so sorry. I'm going to have to go. I wouldn't say, sorry, honey, I don't have time. I'm in the middle of a training right now. Right. So we make decisions based on what it is that we value. We make money decisions based on what it is that we value. We make time decisions based on what it is that we value. So that means that our clients need to have an experience and they need to value and feel like they're actually going to get a result. And they need to feel like they're actually going to be moving off of pain island and moving closer to getting what it is that they desire. Okay. I'm going to stop the share for, for now, and we're going to talk more about invitations. So when we're making an invitation to somebody, we first need to know that they're actually looking for support, right? If they're not, if we don't know if they're actually looking for support and we just go right in and say, hey, do you want to work with me? They're going to say, I don't know, maybe, or they might not respond. Right. So before we actually, and this is one of the things that we give inside of Activate Abundance Academy is a whole DM template. Like how, do, what is it that we say to people to even uncover if they're looking for support? Right. And so before we invite them, we actually want to just uncover, are they pre-qualified? What does that mean? They, if they're pre-qualified, it means they're actually looking for support. It means they're in the slow lane. 
They are looking for support. They just haven't found it yet. Now that doesn't mean that they're ready to buy right now and that's okay, but they're looking for support, right? So they have to be looking for support. They have to be wanting a result, right? And this is the difference between trying to convince somebody that they need you or convince somebody that they have a problem versus inviting them into your ecosystem and then checking in with them. Hey, how are you, right? How did that handout go for you? How did the tip on reducing your anxiety go for you? How did that breath work go for you? How did that time strategy work for you? Is this something that you would like more support around? And we just get to be a real person and ask, is this something that you would like more support around? I would love to, you know, give you my time assessment, right? Christine is here. She's one of my clients. Jennifer's here. She does a uh, adrenal assessment, right? Would you like to take my adrenal assessment? Would you like to take my time assessment to see where you are? And then I can walk you through it and give you some resources, right? So the invitation is actually an invitation into a conversation, not a sales call. You guys need to write that down. When we make invitations for people, first, we have to make an invitation into a conversation, not directly into a sales call, unless they've already reached out to us, right? Like Jennifer, your person reached out to you and said, I want to work with you. How can I work with you? Great. That Yes. Then of course, we're going to invite them on a conversation and share ways that they can work with us, right? But the first thing that we need to do actually falls in nurture right? The invitation that we make is how do we support somebody to hear where they are in their health, in their life? It's one of the reasons why I do holistic business audits, you guys. It's to see where you are in your business so that I can share a resource with you. It's not a sales call. It's not. It's to see, because guess what? If you're asking me for something on that call that I can't give, then that also is giving me information on who I can guide you to or what offer uh, or support, level of support or resource might be the best fit for you, right? So it's giving value. It's letting people walk away with a specific resource because why? We want them to create wins. Why? Because if they create wins, they create momentum and the perception of risk goes down. Can you see how all of this works together? Yeah. So ask first, are they interested in having an extra resource? Are they interested in having more support around this? And if they say yes, they've just pre-qualified themselves. Doesn't mean that they're a buyer, but they've pre-qualified that they are in the slow lane and they are looking for support to solve a problem. Okay, then when you do your audit or when you're having a conversation with them, or even if you're in the DMs, say, great, what is something you know that you would most like support around? Let me grab a resource for you. We do that first, and then we can circle back around and say, how is that resource for you? Are you interested in having more personalized support? Would you like to hear how I could support you? Would you be interested in, you know, I just opened up a, you know, three one-on-one -on -one spots. Would you be interested in exploring if that's a good fit for you right now? I just opened up my, you know, six-week program, uh, you know, to help you reclaim your time. Would you be interested in, um, in the details? Now those are actually invitations into offers, okay? Can you see the difference though, the way that we're actually talking about it and the wording that we're using? We're actually asking people if they would like to explore having a conversation around what could be the best fit for them. We're not saying, do you wanna buy my thing? So what questions are coming up around invitations right now? I would love to help you on this pathway here, because this is where a lot of heart-centered entrepreneurs and coaches get stuck because you tend to feel salesy when you're asking, right? Yeah. Hi, Christine. Hi. So I just have a, a question. Uh, say you already have a relationship with someone and I'm just thinking that the invite mm -hmm. could be, as you said, would you like, are you interested in having a another resource around this, you know? Yeah. So to mm -hmm. send them something like a book, an article, a video mm -hmm. that, you know, you have, mm -hmm. so that's, they have the experience. 
you follow up with them after the experience with a check-in around how that landed for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you can ask again about whether or not they want more support around Mm -hmm. that particular issue. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, for sure. So um, a couple things, and this is just where discernment comes in and you know, your people, you know, People that are already in, and what I like to call the 3%, the fast lane, they've been in our world for a while. Maybe they've downloaded multiple freebies. Maybe they are on your email list already. Maybe they're in your Facebook group already and they're active and they're commenting. That's the 3%. That's what we refer to as somebody who, who already has an experience of no like trust with you. At that point, they know you, you've interacted with them before. And so you might want to just reach out to them and say, hey, Chris, how are you? I don't know if you saw yet, but I just opened up spots for blah, blah, blah. Would you be interested in having a conversation about if this is a good fit for you or not? Right? So that takes the salesy out because what are we doing? We're inviting them to explore. We're inviting them to explore, right? We're supporting them in making what? An empowered decision. We're talking about, okay, you're here. You want to have this different experience. You've had, you know, several resources. You're still in my world. This new thing is happening or this thing is opening or enrollment is open or I've got three spots open for, would you just want to let you know, because you've been in my world for a while. I already know you, you already know me, right? Just want to let you know this is happening. Would you be willing to explore having a conversation to see if this is a good fit for you or not? It's like offering a cookie. Would you like a chocolate chip cookie? They can say no and it's fine. Like they're not willing to explore. They're not saying no to you. They're saying no to being willing to explore, right? So it takes the pressure of rejection off and it just lets us know where they are. Sometimes you might get a comment that says, you know what, now's not a great time, but maybe in the future. Amazing. Thank you for letting me know. Do you have a time frame so that I can circle back around with you? right? If there's anything that you need, I'll just check back in every once in a while, right? And so that could check in, you know, could happen. Maybe you circle back around with them and check in with them a month later and say, hi, it's me. How are you? How's it going? Is there anything I can support you with? That's it. Is there anything I can support you with? So that doesn't feel wonky. That doesn't feel salesy. That doesn't feel like we're trying to convince somebody or drag somebody across the finish line, right? But we do need to take a look at who is in our world that's in the 3% that we could invite to work with us. And believe it or not, every single one of you here have people that are willing to invest to work with you today. I guarantee it. Today. It's a matter, and your brain is going to be telling you, no, I don't. No, I don't. I have no idea who that is. No, I don't. Just because your brain is saying, no, I don't, does not mean that that's true. What's true is that you probably actually haven't invited some of the people that you've already engaged with. That's probably more true than thinking that you don't have enough people, right? It's interesting because one of the things that we see is a lot of people think, well, I don't have enough people or I don't have enough leads. I need more leads, right? And the truth isn't that you need more leads. The truth is that you actually need to make more nurturing, connect more with people and make more invitations. Nurture the people that are in your world right now. If you have a Facebook group, nurture the people that are in your Facebook right now. Ask them, how can I support you today? Is there anything else that you need? I've opened up a one-on-one spot. Would you be interested in exploring joining me? So that you can have this XYZ result that you want, so that you can lower your depression, lower your anxiety, lose the weight, feel better, whatever the result is that you support your ideal client with. Yeah. So questions. Christine, that was a great question. Melissa, what do you run up against? No? You're like, I don't know. Don't call on me. (laughs) No, I was thinking, which Melissa? Which yeah, Melissa? I'm sorry, you, you, <laughs> Melissa H. Sorry, Melissa P. Melissa H. Melissa what, H. Um, what do Any I questions? run up against as far as invitations? Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I would not have invited people to work with me. I've done so much inner work, inner game work that 
inviting is not an issue anymore. My, I think my big thing is not having a clear result to be able to invite people to. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. So yeah. that's actually, if we don't have a clear result, then we can't exactly. have in ourselves and we can't have that sense of, of certainty. Beautiful. Excellent. Exactly. So, so that's is kind of where I am right now and thinking yeah. and working on that. Perfect. So this was absolutely perfect. So now you know that that gap just needs to be filled. That's your next step. How can you create certainty on the result? And by the way, you and I have a call coming up. So I know I'm going to help you with this. Who's the right fit for you, right? Who's the right client, right? Who are the people that we don't have to convince or persuade that they have a problem? They already know they have a problem. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, Deepa. What if you only haven't really expanded your following much? I have some outside my family, friends, circle, but not much at all. Would you still have clients? Or maybe I need to expand the circle. So I would actually say yes to both of that, Deepa. So first of all, we do have people, even if we're just starting to build and grow our business and we don't feel like we have a following or an audience yet, we actually still do have people that would be willing and are looking for support. It means that we just need to kind of take a look. By the way, I'm going to do a special bonus training on this on where to find paying clients in any economy um, next week. So I'm going to talk more about this in depth. Um, if you're just starting and you're like, I don't know where to find clients. This is where, you, you know, if you have family and if you have friends and you've got any, you know, part of people that are in your ecosystem at all, this is where you want to see where are they and maybe they also know somebody, Right. Who do they know that might be looking for this support, right? So this is where we also kind of pull this other lever that Melissa was talking about the other day about um, audiences, right? How do we leverage other people's audiences, right? To bring more of our ideal client into our ecosystem. Yeah. So whenever we make offers, we are only making offers to people in our warm market, not cold. We are not trying to commit to persuade. We are only making invitations and offers to people in our warm market. Okay. In order to get them warm, if they're brand new, we have to nurture. We have to collapse that timeline of 11 hours. Right. And Jennifer, you're doing such a great job with that. So Jennifer is a therapist and she's also a menopause coach and she started doing it. I hope this is okay that I share this, Jennifer. Can I share about the meetups? Okay. Um, she does meetups every single month. And that is one of her ways to collapse the timeline, right? So if she's going to do a live meetup every month and she does it um, on Zoom, right? You've done some in person, you've done some on Zoom, right? They're getting to have an experience. They're getting to know Jennifer. They're getting to see what is it that she's sharing. She's consistent every day inside of her Facebook group. She scheduled out posts and she knows what her person struggles with, right? And now she just got her first paying client. So congratulations this week. Yay. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Deepa, I talked yesterday about nurture. So you'll want to go and watch the replay for yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Cause today we're actually on step five and I don't want to go back. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who else feels like they get stuck because they feel salesy about making an offer? Anybody? I used to all the time. Again, I shared with you guys yesterday that I was that I wished people would like cancel. Like I secretly hoped that they wouldn't actually show up to the call. Yeah. Anybody else feel nervous about inviting people to work with them? Even my clients, you guys come off me, ask happy Alyssa, Jennifer, Christina. Hi, Chris. It's Alyssa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so I still feel like that. Well, not so much salesy, but I get really nervous to invite you to like an assessment call mm -hmm. um, because I feel like it can feel salesy. It's just like a fine line. So I still get a little bit nervous with that. Okay. So whenever we get nervous about making an offer, a couple things are at play here. Number one is what is the talk that we've got going on in our head about it? We tend to make it about us. What are they thinking of me? Instead of how can I actually help them get a better result? 
right? So Alyssa, your work is just going to be on repeat, but what if they don't find me? But what if they don't find a solution to the problem? But what if they don't take the assessment and they're still struggling and they don't know what to do differently? So we want to put the focus back on the reason why we're inviting them into assessment is so that they can get a different result, right? Money is a side effect to the service. If we're making it about closing the deal or getting the client, we're going to feel wonky and salesy, right? Yeah, because we're like, well, I just want to close the deal. I just want to get the client. But if we make it about serving and helping them make an empowered decision and letting taking the pressure off us, we don't need to make them say yes. That's not our job. Our job is to provide a service, to give value and let them make the decision. So sometimes we get in our own way by thinking that, but what if they say no, right? Or what if they think I'm just trying to get their money? What if they think I'm just trying to make a sale, right? That's all about you. It's all about me. If I'm thinking that, that's all about me, right? Instead of, you know what? I'm here to serve. I'm here to help. I know that no matter what, they're going to walk away with a better experience than when they got here, or they're going to walk away with a solution regardless of whether they decide to work with me. How different would it make you feel if you knew that, that person, by just having a conversation with you, was going to walk away with a win no matter what. How would that That's make you good. Feel? That's good. I like that. Okay. Because that is really what the intention is. We want them to walk away with a win no matter what. And I will tell you another reason why that's really important. I, I, I can count... God, I can't count on my fingers how many times this has happened where someone has been a no, not yet. And they've come back later and said, now I'm ready. And the reason why is because they felt amazing when they said no. They felt like it was okay because it was an empowered decision because it really was. It wasn't a decision made out of fear. It was a decision that, you know what? I do want this. And I just realized that right now, is not when I want it, but they get to decide that, right? And I'm like, great, awesome, fantastic. I'm so glad you feel really good about that decision. They're supported in the decision. Yeah, Jennifer. Yeah, I was just gonna say it, it gets easier with practice mm -hmm. and it gets easier when you have a rapport built with that person that you're trying to invite. Yeah, because it feels so awkward when you don't really know them very well. And we're also doing this invitation process, very one dimensional virtual, yeah. Yeah. whereas if I had been having conversations in the flesh in person with someone, it would feel so much more natural yeah. to say, hey, let me talk about how I can support you. Here's, you know, all the different ways. It just feels harder when it's through DMs because yeah. you have no idea what their personality is like and you know yes. what they're thinking. So I, I think that does play a role sometimes just the whole sure. virtual invitation. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, like yesterday I ended up messaging a woman that I had messaged a couple months ago and I just wanted to check back in and we'd established a little rapport through the messages. And then it just naturally led yesterday into me saying, it sounds like you're dealing with a lot would you like to hear more about how I might be able to help you? And it just felt so natural and yeah. it didn't feel coerced or weird or funky. Mm -hmm. And so I think when it, when it happens and it's right, it just feels like that. Yeah, exactly. And so everybody, I want you to hear that what happened was that there was a relationship that was built first. Okay. That's the difference. That's why the nurture method that I teach is so important. Because they don't teach you that in business books and schools or anything else that relate. And look, that is actually, and it's so weird for me to say the wave of the future, but that is really what makes what is going to be the difference between you staying in business and other people closing their doors down. Okay. It is timeless. It is timeless. Relationships will always matter. Always. Right. Not tactics not the algorithm, right? A lot of times we're like, we blame it on the algorithm. Oh, it's the algorithm. That's the reason why I don't have enough clients. Nope, that's not true. If you are focusing on relationships, the algorithm doesn't matter. 
You don't need to have a giant audience either. I hit my first six figures when I only had a very small Facebook group of 500 people and less than a thousand people on my email list. And it's because I focused on relationships. Okay, so a lot of times when we feel salesy, it's because we're worried either about us or we actually don't really know enough about that person. And so we might actually be making the invitation a little bit too early. We might be going for a premature marriage proposal, right? Yeah, you're right, Deepa, relationship equals trust. Exactly. And again, strangers don't buy. There has to be an experience of trust and of safety. Because if nobody feels like they trust you, they won't buy. If they don't feel safe with you, they won't buy. And if they don't believe the result that you're talking about is possible, they won't invest. Okay. How is this feeling for you guys? I would love, by the way, thank you, Deepa, for, for putting that, that in there. Yeah, she, she says it reminds her of a great service person in a retail store who also gets sales. Good analogy. Yeah, absolutely. Can I just say something about the buyer's journey? Sure. So one of the things that I had to get over and get past, and I still gripe about it sometimes because, you know, I'm human and we're all building a business and we want our clients now. Like we want yeah. the money now. And so- <laughs> We are learning that, like you said, you know, the, the buyer's journey can take like up to a year. I mean, it's not as easy as it used to be. So we can't go into this, like building a business thing, thinking like, you know, I'm going to get clients like right away. So I just, you know, I, sometimes I complain about the fact that I have like the same five, six people engaging all the time in my Facebook group. And I don't have a huge Facebook group. I probably have like 132 people, which that's not good or bad. It's just 132 people. And I can make the most of those 132 people. But the fact that the same people keep showing up, like I used to think of it as like, like what the hell is wrong? Like with me, what's wrong with my blah, blah, blah. But it's like, those people are, they obviously value what I have. If they mm -hmm. keep showing up, if they keep taking all the free resources, you know, I used to complain mm -hmm. like, oh, they'll just take all the free resources I have, you know, and then like run the other way. But that's not true. I mean, they keep showing up to the lives. They keep showing up to the masterclass. They keep raising their hand for the free resource. And when I changed the way that I thought about that, I was like, these are the people that are going to eventually like buy from you. And if you're selling them a high ticket program, you know, you're talking with five, six people, that's a good chunk of change. So yeah. it's just yeah. like really just being patient and just not giving up, just keep showing up. And, you know, it's easy to get discouraged, but you know, let yourself have your little tantrum and then just get back at it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to speak into a couple of things that you just said, Christina, because that's first of all, being patient. Yes. But also being consistent. Right. And that's something that Jennifer and Christina and Alyssa are all doing right now inside of Activate Abundance Academy is they're consistent. They're implementing consistently. Right. And I also want to just kind of kind of debunk the myth that it's hard. It's not really hard. Like really, let's take a look at like birthing a, birthing a baby at home was freaking hard. Let me tell you, right? That was hard. <laughs> I birthed three babies naturally. That was hard. Creating a relationship with somebody doesn't really have to be hard. And we can actually have clients a whole lot quicker. But again, we, we need to discern who are the ones in our warm audience. So Christine, Christina got actually clients pretty darn quickly, right? Because they were in her warm audience right? So there are people in our warm audience right now, but we need to do both. We need to have what I call as a short-term strategy and a long-term strategy, right? And that's where a cash infusion comes in. I wasn't planning on talking about it, but it just reminded me. When we need to create a cash infusion in our business to create income, that is something specific that we go only for our ideal clients. Every single one of you could create a cash infusion in your business and actually get a client today. So it doesn't have to take a year, but again, it's only, we're only going to be inviting people that are in our ecosystem already, right? So they might have been in our ecosystem for three months, six months, right? It just depends also on their level of readiness, right? We all have a different level of, of readiness and trust, right? So it depends, are we showing up consistently? 
are we focusing on the right things or are we just kind of pushing papers around on our desk or tweaking the uh, uh, website yet again, right? Trying to find just that one special word, right? Or are we actually taking a look at, hmm, who is in my ecosystem that I could invite to work with me in this way? And so a cash infusion is very different. A cash infusion is what I call the short-term strategy. It's one of the things that I teach inside of Activate Abundance Academy. We actually give you access to the Cash Flow Accelerator course. And um, again, I shared yesterday that the first five to join me inside of Activate Abundance Academy get 30 days with me to create a cash infusion so that you can, so that I can help you determine what is going to be an offer that is going to be specific to your ideal client so that you can bring in cash quickly because I want you to create cash quickly, because when you bring on a client, you're actually a momentum. You're going to be more excited about continuing to implement, right? So the longer term strategy, which is actually creates a sustainable and a predictable business, is getting on repeat the attract, nurture, and invite over and over again, okay? And Deepa's right, attracting the right clients rather than a person who's not ready, exactly. Right. So two different strategies to build and grow your business. One is how am I making a sale today? Is there anything, is there anybody in my warm market that I could serve? The other one is what am I doing to bring new people into my ecosystem? What am I doing to nurture the people that are already there? And then who might be ready to have a, a conversation? How is this landing for you guys? Any other questions? Is this making, is this making sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. It really isn't any more complicated than that. We really tend to make it so darn complicated, right? There's multiple ways that you can attract people. The key is to find, you know, the, the ones that feel good to you that are, you know, going to be working on repeat for you. It's one of the reasons why I love doing something like this where I'm teaching and I'm giving value because I love to do it. If I didn't like doing it, I wouldn't have been doing it for the past three years. I love this. Like it doesn't burn me out anymore. But in the beginning, it was like, oh my gosh, that's so much energy to pour out. I love it. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. So if you are somebody who likes to educate and likes to teach, then this might be a method that works for you because it actually does all three. It attracts new people into your ecosystem. It nurtures them and gives them value. And it gives you an opportunity to say, hey, if you're ready, if you want my support to implement what it is that you're learning, enrollment is now open for Activate Abundance Academy. You guys heard me do that last night, right? Some of you are going to be like, yep, I'm ready. Some of you are going to be like, yeah, I'm not sure yet. Some of you are going to be like, hmm, I wonder what else she has, right? Whatever. It doesn't matter, but it does all three. It attracts, it nurtures, it invites, and it collapses that 11 hours very, very quickly. Yeah. And it, go ahead, Christine, did you have a question? It looked like you were going to come off mute. <laughs> I do that to Jennifer all the time. I'm like, I can see her reaching for the unmute button. You're still muted though. Um, so I gather, and maybe this is wrong, but it, it feels like in order to actually do any of that, which is, you know, like do this kind of a web, you know, a workshop, you have to have, you have to really start a either a Facebook page that's a business oriented Facebook page or in order to be able to launch this. That's okay. your, so it feels like, you know, it, it feels like that's, is that, am I? Yeah, no, I, I actually don't recommend a Facebook business page. What or, I do recommend is building a group okay. because a group is very, very different. You're, a group is closed, which means that the only three types of people that are going to come into your Facebook group are somebody who actually is a potential ideal client because they're actually looking for a solution. Somebody who's a champion, right? That is in there. Maybe they're previous clients, maybe they're current clients, maybe they're a cheerleader for you or a collaborator. So a group is a group of people that are looking for a solution to the same thing. And you're leading that group. Okay. So that is one way. That's my favorite way because I love groups and I love community and that's my jam. And I really just enjoy it. OK, there are two places that people hang out the most online when we're talking about online. One is YouTube. The other is Facebook. 
Those are the two highest, the, the most like stellar, a way above and beyond any other social marketing platform. Okay. So one place that I show up is on Facebook and the other one is in my email. And so Christine, the other one would be email, right? You can do, you can build an audience inside of email and you can invite people from your email list to join you on Zoom, right? One of my, as a matter of fact, my book coach, some of you may or may not know her, Sarah Cannell, she actually has a multiple million dollar business and she actually did that by growing her email list. Now, granted, she's got about over, I don't know, 10, 30,000 people on her email list now, but she's been doing this over the years, right? And so that is another way. If you absolutely hate social media and you don't want to be on it, there are a lot of other ways to build and grow your business um, and market off social media. Deepa, yeah. So uh, I wanted to ask, because I, I see you are so like comfortable when you're you know, sharing here and uh, probably because of the experience too. But for me, I love workshops and you know that's kind of like one of my strategy or one of the things I like to do is workshop to mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, get the, uh, what you call my offer kind of out. But I'm very, in a very pretty beginning stage. And so the people I'm marketing will be hold I mean, I know some people don't want to do cold, uh, not cold, what you call it, you know, paid marketing, but I don't really like to, how do you call it? Like organic marketing feels a little bit like, uh, I, I know it just, I mean, it's good, but for me, I just don't want to like go to the groups and attract yet. That's kind of not how I don't feel safe to do it, but I want like, you know, so I have some time people sign up for my like what you call it uh, uh, paid marketing and like program or workshop but there is a, like a lot of fear sometime coming up like I have to be certain way acting certain way because I'm comparing myself to yeah. the paid marketers that is in the Facebook or paid coaches right so I'm like okay I need to like have this whatever the the workshop like be great and you know very high expectation so yes. you know, any any like suggestion on like I see how you're doing it like as like you know it's just like a talk and just like you know like conversation and uh for you like you know any suggestion on how to let yeah, yeah. brush it off yeah absolutely so I want to speak to two things because you brought two things up one is paying for marketing and one is a workshop so let me answer the workshops question first when you have a signature system your workshop is based on your signature system. So what that means is that you hone and master the process. So the first couple of times might feel a little nervous, but then it gets easier and easier and easier because you're teaching the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Now my workshop, even though I'm teaching the soulful abundance system over and over and over again, it's never the same. Why? Because I don't work off a script because I can't stick with a script. And so it depends on questions that happen here. I'm going to teach the same steps but sometimes the information comes out differently and that's okay, right? So we do want to make sure that we create an experience for people. And when you do a workshop, Deepa, I think that your workshop actually does those three things. It brings people into your ecosystem because they want to learn what it is that you're talking about. If you are doing it in like a Zoom room, and I highly recommend a Zoom room because it creates interaction, it creates community, it creates more intimacy then people are getting an experience of you, right? And then yes, you can either invite them to hop on a call with you or you can invite them to explore your, your next thing. Here's the thing though, with your workshops, you really do wanna make sure that they're more than one day, okay? Or just one hour, because again, the 11 hours, right? So that's why my workshops are typically around five days. We know that there's actually a sweet spot and the sweet spot is around three to five days. Some people do nine days. Right. I actually end up doing nine days because I do some bonus trainings, but I cover all of my yep, yeah, bye, bye, Jennifer. But I cover the main social, social abundance system within, you know, a certain number of days. And then my bonuses or my bonus days or my bonus trainings are really just about what I hear people asking. What are people asking me? 
What are people asking here? What are my clients asking me? What is the community asking me? So that I can, can do that. So step one, Deepa, is to not worry about perfection, right? Comparing your chapter one to somebody else's 20 is just, it's not effective for any of us, right? We just have to start and we have to allow ourselves to do it imperfectly and know that just doing it is a win. And then you put that on repeat and then it becomes more comfortable over and over and over again. So would you say that some level of practice or like what you call it, doing it again and again, yeah, lead you to kind of be like relaxed, like, okay, I'm not going to worry about it now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because you feel comfortable with the material. You've taught it. You're probably going to know what people are asking questions around too, because you've done it multiple times, right? Which means you get to hone and master the process. That's the key, right? That's what keeps it simple right? When you have a signature system, we're creating a signature talk or a signature event or a signature workshop around your signature system so that you become stand out as your process, as your system. And you put that on repeat. My clients actually do um, a nurture event about once a quarter, once a quarter, every quarter, they'll do the same one, right? Mm -hmm. And then guess what? By the fourth, you know, by the time that you've done it a couple times, it becomes easier, Right. And then we also get to dive in and go, okay, how did it go? Like, what do we need to tweak? What did we love? What didn't we like? Like we hone and master that process. Mm -hmm. Right. As we go. Yeah. And then the paid marketing part, I highly recommend that you do not invest in paid marketing right now. And the reason why is because you don't have a process to attract the right people into your ecosystem and to convert them into sales. Hiring marketing does not do that process. The only thing that marketing, paying for marketing does is it gets eyeballs out there, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the right client. And it doesn't, it doesn't convert people for you like that. Okay. The only way people are going to become a buyer is if they have an experience of you and they have that no like trust with you. So you have to do and marketing and just posting, posting on social media is not a marketing system. It is step one of attraction, but it is not a process that nurtures them and then invites them to work with you. Right. Okay. I have a follow-up question. So if you don't have a following, then you probably have to attract those clients with like say Facebook group, then you would have to do a little bit of paid marketing, like say oh, get a lead. Oh, you know no, what you no, call paid no, leads? No, 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 no. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. So how do you get clients for Facebook group? If, if, I yeah. mean, Facebook group then. yeah. So I want, here's the thing, Deepa, I want you to go back and watch the replays because I talked about this on how we actually attract new people into our ecosystem organically. And I talked about that yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go back and watch yesterday's replay because you're going to learn a whole lot more. Your question will be answered. And I'll also answer that here. There are multiple organic ways to attract people into your ecosystem. One of them is by doing what we call one word marketing, you know, so for example, who are my women who want to learn more about intermittent fasting? I have a free resource for you. Great. Guess what? Everybody who comments on that post is a potential client. They've raised their hand. They said they want that resource. They are now in your ecosystem. That is one way of organic marketing. Another way of organic marketing is to be on a podcast and to share something or some sort of training. Another way of organic marketing is to actually um, do uh, like, um, like a, like a, oh my gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're at like a networking group and you can connect and collaborate with other people that serve your ideal client a little bit differently. Maybe you decide to do a Facebook swap. I've done that many, many times. So there's actually more ways to do it organically, Deepa, than actually paying. And again, the problem with paid marketing is that you don't have a process. You don't actually know what your ideal client wants or doesn't want. You have to be crystal clear on who your ideal client is and what the problem is that you solve and be crystal clear on that first before you start investing in, in paid marketing, before you start investing in ads. I hear that you don't want to do the organic marketing. I get that, but yeah. you, the have groups, you know, like other people's group, how do you call it? The, you know, going to all the groups and I know people post, you I, know, I don't do that. Yeah. I don't do that. I don't do that. So again, you get to find something that works for you. 
Okay. And that's, if you don't like that, you don't do that. But there are so many ways to actually do organic marketing and bring people into your ecosystem. So um, a couple things, go back again, watch the replay from yesterday. And then I will look into my business vault and I will find um, ways that you can, um, you know, actually, I'm going to send you my marketing off social media. And I'll give you more ways on how you want to, if anybody wants that, by the way, let me know, just kind of pop that in the chat. If you're on Facebook, just go ahead and, and pop, you know, marketing in the chat. So we know that you're asking for the marketing off social media training. Happy to share that with you. But there are multiple ways to do that. And you really want to do that first before you start investing, because you will waste a whole bunch of money on marketing. And again, marketing doesn't convert clients. Marketing gets eyeballs on you. And not necessarily the right eyeballs if you don't know who the ideal client and the problem is that you're solving. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Awesome. So thank you guys. We're like way over time. So thank you so much anyways. Um, if you have any more questions, reach out to me in the chat. I am more than happy to support you um, and answer your questions. If you still have one here that wasn't answered. And if you haven't yet, you know, booked your audit, please book that with me. Again, it's not a sales call. It is a way for me to see where you are and to help you kind of put the pieces together and fill in the gap that you need. Okay. If you do want support around making a decision about joining me inside of Activate Abundance or any other resource, DM me, message me. We'll set up a call and a conversation. And again, the conversation is to share resources and to help you make an empowered decision. No is absolutely okay. As long as it's an empowered no, I promise I will absolutely support you in an empowered no, right? And if Activate Abundance isn't for you, there are other ways that I can support you. And I'm more than happy to share with you what those other resources are too. All right, ladies, thank you for hanging out with me. You guys are like rock stars here. We will make sure that we put the check mark next to your name on our spreadsheet to go into the drawing to win the VIP day with me. Tomorrow, we're going to come back at four o'clock again. I know it's a Friday at four o'clock, but come back if you can, um, because we're going to be talking about obstacles to success. Okay. Because we do kind of get in our own way and there are eight specific obstacles to success. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. And then Saturday, we're going to do an open Q&A. So if you guys have any questions about any of the trainings, I'm here for you. Um, and we'll do an open Q&A Sunday watch the replays, catch up, enjoy your weekend, relax. Um, and then the following week, we're going to do the where to find paying clients in any economy so that you guys can um, understand exactly kind of where your ideal client is hanging out and what to do about that. Okay. Sound good? Awesome. Thank you for being here. You guys, you're awesome. <laughs>